Hello guys, recently I published a tweet about using cloud code. My personal favorite way of using cloud code is inside of IDE, like in my case, Cursor. And that tweet blew up with quite a lot of comments, 42 comments of people commenting how they use cloud code, what are their alternatives, and what is actually better or worse. So for example, Sarhat is asking, is there any difference of using cloud code inside of VS Code and extension or terminal? So I decided to try it out and I will show you the difference in this video. So I will show you cloud code in action with the same prompt in terminal, original terminal of Mac, then terminal inside of cursor and then VS Code extension. And we'll see the difference. And at the end of this video, I will also mention other alternatives where you can use cloud code or cloud models inside of other terminals or IDEs. There are a lot of them these days. So people commented on my tweet as well. And I want to mention those alternatives as well. So this is at the end of this video, but for now, let's see those three main options in action. So the prompt will be relatively easy, new Laravel project, and I just want to add a checkbox in the profile settings to subscribe to newsletter. Relatively easy to build in a few minutes by Sonnet, and let's see how the experience is different in terminal versus IDEs. So first let's try Cloud Code in regular terminal. So I launched Cloud, I chose Sonnet model in this case, and the prompt is this. On the profile page, add a checkbox to subscribe to newsletter in the uh, settings profile live wire component, and also add a user stable new column, newsletter subscribed at nullable by default, but filled in with timestamp if that checkbox is checked. This is, by the way, whisper flow in action dictation, and I need to make a few changes in the prompt. I meant user stable, and then newsletter subscribed at as a new field, one like this. And now let's see what Cloud will do in the terminal. What it will ask, what will be the process, how long it will take, and I will pause on some actions that are important. So first we have the to-do list automatically, then it searches for files and patterns. And as you can see, one of the points is automatically write and run tests, which is powered by Laravel Boost Cloud MD instructions. And now it's asking for make migration. And in this case, I will approve all PHP artisan commands for this session. And I deliberately didn't run Cloud with dangerously skip permissions as I often do in my videos. In this case, I wanted to show the actual process for regular use of Cloud. So we have the first change and we need to approve that. But let's approve all the changes manually. And let's watch what it does next. So it runs the migration automatically because we approved all the PHP artisan commands, then the next change. And basically we can watch the changes, what was changed file by file, line by line with pretty good diff view like this. We can scroll up and down in the terminal. So the change is made, now updating the test files, which should be probably executed and now we're almost two minutes in, the tests pass from the first time. Also, I need to approve pint with code styling changes. So yes, approve pint. And yeah, this tells me that it's preparing the conclusion and the final text what was actually done. So yeah, this is the overview of what was done in roughly two minutes. So this is the experience in the terminal with cloud code. But my personal problem with this approach is that, for example, if I let it run and then come back later, then it's harder to review the changes. So I need to scroll up and read those changes made and then go one by one, reading also while it was searching, reading and stuff like that. It is readable, but I prefer to review the file list like an IDE with Git changes. And this is exactly why I prefer to run Cloud Code inside of IDE. And by the way, we can take a look that the result is actually working. So there are settings, there's new checkbox. We can tick subscribe to newsletter. This is saved. And if we refresh the page, the checkbox is ticked. And if we untick that, we save, we go here and it is saved successfully. So it's all working. So now let's try cloud code inside of IDE like cursor. And then we'll go to VS Code as VS Code extension. But in this case, we just launch terminal in cursor and run cloud. And in this case, it's important to connect cloud code to IDE with slash command IDE 
cursor, which gives us the ability of, for example, highlighting something in the IDE and then prompting for that in cloud code in the terminal. So there's connection between the two. And now I will just repeat the same prompt and let's see what happens. I will make it slightly bigger and let's see what it asks us inside of cursor. The experience should be the same I'm expecting because it's the same terminal just inside of IDE, but we'll see if something is different. So yeah, same plan of action, same reading the blade files and others, but look what happens when it starts generating the code. So same process to approve something. And again, I approve the things that I want. And this is the main thing on the left that I like inside of IDE. So I already immediately can look at the changes while Claude is working. So I allow the edit and then I don't need to closely watch the terminal. I can review the file separately so I can open this with double click and I can lower down the terminal and see if I like the code generated. Now with that, the downside is that Claude code specifically in cursor, but maybe in others, start flickering quite a lot if I do up and down with this height. So see, there was a flickering for a second or so. So it does happen quite a lot. And sometimes it is annoying, especially if I want to scroll up or down to see the changes. But this is exactly why I want to see the changes afterwards in the sidebar of git tree. So it is done with the changes. I need to approve pint command again. And to see the actual process, we need to go up, bash running the profile test. And yeah, done in roughly two minutes. But then again, how I review the code, this is personally important for me is I close the terminal and go through files one by one like this. So I see not only the specific change, but all the file for the context. So I would remember what that file even is and what it does. So to me as a developer, this experience of reviewing is better than using the terminal itself. But of course it depends on personal workflow. So each probably person is different. So my workflow is instruct cloud code, do the agentic work with conversation with the agent, and then close the terminal and do the review in IDE. Sometimes I do notice something along the way in the agentic terminal conversation and I do reprompt Claude from time to time, but most of the times the things that I've noticed, for example, if I don't like something in the code, then I either fix it manually right away or reopen the terminal and prompt for the changes. And why specifically I like cursor for that? Historically, I started with cursor with AI experiments because cursor is great at auto-completing, auto-suggesting. So whenever I type something, I just need to hit tab here and there and it's suggesting a lot of stuff for me. So this tab completion experience is unmatched in IDEs. So whenever I go to edit something in VS Code or PHP Storm or others, it's just not the same. If you're typing the code manually, the experience in cursor is just better. And now let's try the same thing in another IDE, which is Visual Studio Code, VS Code. As you can see, Claude sign is on the top right, and this is powered by extension, officially recommended by Claude Code. So in the official documentation of Claude Code, install and configure Claude Code extension which is this one with 2.5 million installs already. So I have installed and configured that already. And let's see what happens if I click this. I enter Claude code sidebar. So let's make it a little bigger and I can prompt it as a terminal, right? So let's do exactly that. I've pasted the same prompt as in others. And let's see how Claude code in VS Code inside of VS Code actually works. It looks similar with a bit different visual experience. So maybe a little more fancy fonts and spacings for to do list. And I can also watch the changes. So if I close this one, I can watch the changes in source control. Since cursor is a fork of VS Code, it visually looks very similarly. But Claude Code extension in VS Code, as I said, looks a bit differently in terms of fonts and also this. So I can approve the change with my mouse or keyboard. And let's do exactly that. And yeah, the changes start to appear here on the left. And now what happens with VS Code, it starts opening the files automatically. And this is the part that I don't really like necessarily. Of course, I can 
for example, close this, git changes, and then I will probably see more here. Or if you have more monitor space or multiple monitors, maybe it's readable, but I'm shooting that on my MacBook Pro 16 inch laptop. So this experience of automatically opening the files is not convenient personally for me, but again, it's very personal and depending on your preferences. So let's approve that change again. I do like those colorful diffs here above with all the syntax highlighting then I approve PHP Artisan Migrate. Wait, I actually had to approve Migrate manually. I didn't have to approve it in cursor or terminal, so something extra to approve. So even approval works a bit differently. So in cursor and in terminal, I approved all PHP Artisan commands, and now I approved one Artisan command and then another command. Okay, another change, another profile change. We can click to expand, by the way, or close. So this experience is better for me personally, instead of opening the file. So editing the test, and by the way, I still can open the file like this, and probably I can drag and drop to reposition that to be on top. I'm not a heavy VS Code user, so I don't really know how to do that quickly. So I'll just close it for now, and then we need to approve PHP Artisan test. So this is another difference. I wanted to approve PHP Artisan all commands. So VS Code is more granular to approve specifically PHP Artisan test commands. I'm not actually sure what is right or wrong. Both are okay. I prefer to be more loose and don't click approval on every step. I often even use dangerously skip permissions, especially for demo projects. But yeah, VS Code is trying to be more cautious. And yeah, it's working on the summary of the changes. Even the way how it's presented, it's a bit different, so it doesn't show the time. I don't know how much time has passed since the beginning. I just see the summary, and that's it. So yeah, all in all, VS Code extension, Cloud Code, a really good experience with some minor things I would probably change, but they depend also on my personal preference. Your personal preferences may be different. But what I do want to emphasize here is that VS Code extension is behind the features of official terminal client. So if you get back to the official documentation of Cloud Code in VS Code, down below there is a table of comparison of features, extension versus CLI. And if we zoom in, as you can see, slash commands, you have all the slash commands in the terminal, but in VS Code, you have only subset of commands, which are hidden. So there's a slash button here in the bottom right, but also you can type slash and see which commands are available. And in my personal experience, I run, for example, usage quite a lot to check how much left and usage command is not available in VS Code extension for whatever reason. So if I type usage, no matching command. So this is just one of my personal examples. But in general, also there are a few more limitations to VS Code extension compared to terminal experience. This is kind of as usual native experience of the client with model is always better because the same company controls that. VS Code is a Microsoft product, so they need to depend on that. But Cloud Code Client as a terminal is from the same company Anthropic, so it always will be the first to launch new features in. So for example, tab completion, which is a relatively new feature in Cloud Code, is not available in VS Code extension. But if you don't care that much about those experiences, then VS Code and Cloud Code are good friends and you can use it inside of VS Code as well. And also I want to mention a few other alternatives where you may want to use Cloud Code. So in the official Cloud Code documentation, they mention just JetBrains IDE as well as Visual Studio Code. So for example, you can use PHP Storm with Cloud Code. Again, you use Marketplace installation Cloud Code plugin from JetBrains, but this would be the same as extension in VS Code with slightly different UI and UX and maybe a few features missing here and there. And also I want to comment on a few other alternatives, how people replied to the initial tweet and what did they suggest me to use. One of the alternatives is open code, where you can also use Opus model and apparently you can also add your Anthropic subscription there. The answer to Ricardo's question, no, I haven't tried it lately. So a video to come in the future if you have tried it. So let me know in the comments if open code experience is better. Generally, I see people using open code if they want to jump between the different models like Anthropic models, 
then OpenAI, then maybe GLM and stuff like that, depending on the project and the task. But again, I assume that they will not have the same experience of like slash commands and others of Cloud Code Terminal official one. But I may be wrong here, so comment down below if your experience is different. Then a few people mentioned warp as terminal. Warp has all of these built in, which means looking at the changes, looking at the file tree and all of that is kind of like IDE and terminal combined. Also Bill is saying warp terminal has file explorer sidebar. And here's another comment praising warp terminal, but I have a problem with warp. I tried it in the past, it was okay, nothing really too bad, it's working, but in late October of 2025, they changed the pricing. So for them, it was kind of like cursor moment back in the day when cursor had changed their price from $20 per month for 500 credits, if I remember correctly. And then the community of Warp, for example, on Reddit concluded this is really bad price changes. And I've read a lot of similar opinions elsewhere, not only on Reddit, on Twitter, that Warp is basically not a viable option anymore economically just because of the pricing. But again, I haven't tried myself lately Warp with Cloud Code. So if you do use that, let me know in the comments below if it's actually good and if it's actually viable economically. So what do you actually pay for? Also, another alternative mentioned by Vasil is ZIDE, which I haven't tried at all. So if you are a Z user, please comment below and let me know if Cloud Code support is good. And the final alternative I will mention is Conductor, pretty newcomer on the blog, Conductor Build. This is a Mac specific software, Mac application that you install to control Cloud Code instance or multiple instances, multiple agents in quite a nice UI. I've seen a few reviews of them and it looks promising and I'll probably shoot a video about that separately. But all in all, my conclusion is my personal favorite is to use Cloud Code inside of Cursor just because of autocomplete if I want to type in something, make manual changes. And the terminal experience is the same last version of Cloud Code official terminal. For all the extensions and plugins inside of other IDEs, it's not 100% up to latest features. But again, as usual, we can discuss in the comments, which way do you prefer? How do you use Cloud Code? In which terminal, extension, plugin, or IDE? Let me know in the comments below. And as usual, reminder that I have a newsletter on Substack, AI Coding Daily. You can subscribe to that to get every Wednesday something like this, the summary of the week in the community of AI coding with my own links and opinions on top. And also I'm working on extra perk for paid members of this Substack. For now, they are getting the nine video two hour series of creating a Laravel project with Cloud Code with the repository included. But I will talk more about perks for paid members later in this year. You can just support my mission by subscribing to paid newsletter for now, and I will have more gifts for you later in January. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.